today on our show. It's our 10th episode of Pick of the Week. 10th Pick of the Week episode, people. <laughs> this is huge, monumental, earth shattering. So stick around, we got huge things going on today. This is Chuck Lode of Comics. Hello and welcome to Chuck Load of Comics' 10th episode da, of da, Pick da, of the Week. Da. Huge. Did you think we'd make it to 10 episodes? No. <laughs> good. Honesty is good. the best policy. Confidence. Confidence right. is good. <laughs> well, we did, damn it. Woohoo! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's a lot of books we've covered. So, yeah. hope you're enjoying it. We've definitely gotten some more viewership in the past 10 episodes. Uh, we got like 10 subscribers to our, no, 49 subscribers 49, yeah. to our YouTube channel. We could really use one more. Thank you, so 49 that could be you. people. So let's just jump right into it, man. We got some great stuff to talk about. We got Thor. We're going to talk about huge issues of Thor this week. And uh, yeah, we're going to show some cool videos. Lots of cool stuff going on. So let's just jump right into it with the nerd news. Nerd news. Nerd news. Here we go. <laughs> The marketing for Fox's Deadpool 2 is in full swing. Following the hilarious faux opening to the movie Logan, the creative team behind the much-anticipated sequel released another side-splitting featurette showing the Merc with the Mouth visiting a hopefully now familiar gravesite. The 90-second video pokes fun at familiar characters like Colossus, Ajax, and includes a particularly funny jab at the Deadpool creator, Rob LaFeld. Deadpool 2 is currently in pre-production and is scheduled for release sometime in 2018. This week, fans of Stephen King got their first look at the mind-bending poster for the upcoming film, The Dark Tower. The poster shows lead character Roland Deschain standing beside a young man in an upturned New York City with a silhouette of the Dark Tower in the center and the cryptic text, There Are Other Worlds Than These. The movie adaptation of the popular eight-part novel will star Idris Elba as gunslinger Roland Deschain and Matthew McConaughey as the elusive man in black. Fans don't have to wait as the Dark Tower film hits theaters this July. Dark Tower. Awesome. Dark Tower! Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Deadpool 2, man. Oh, man. Deadpool. Have you, have you seen the uh, Deadpool 2 featurette? That, that, uh, of course. It's freaking hilarious. <laughs> if you haven't, if you haven't watched it, you know what? We're gonna do something we've never done before. We're gonna show it to you. It is our tenth episode. Tenth episode. Let's change Let's it up a little show bit. Show some videos, man. <laughs> Stop talking about stuff and show stuff. All right. So here we go. We're gonna roll it for you. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen Logan yet, might be a little. You might not want to watch spoiler. this. But but if you don't give a shit about spoilers, if you haven't seen Logan yet, mm. what's your problem? Right. <laughs> so go out and see Logan. Hit pause. Go see Logan, and then come back and watch this. So here it is, the Deadpool two teaser. <laughs> Pretty good. Right? Pretty freaking hilarious <laughs> stuff. Now, when, when we wrote this news story, uh, I heard, I, I recently, just this morning, heard that this is actually could be a fan-made film. I don't know if it's, it, it is from the Fox creative team or if it's something that a fan made. I, that's just, it might just be a rumor because huh. it is a fan-made film. Kudos to you. With Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it might not be Ryan Reynolds. I don't know. Anything. I've watched it several times since hearing that rumor, and it's clearly Ryan Reynolds' yeah. voice. But regardless, mm. if it is a fan film, fuck, you made a great <laughs> fan film. Uh, but yeah, it's hilarious. It's hilarious, yeah. man. Uh, it's got, as you saw, they talk about uh, it's got Colossus, the, the ringtone, <laughs> the, the X-Men animated 90s. series ringtone. It's, it's got Colossus on the toilet <laughs> in the little, he's not called Colossus, it says Ivan Drago on his caller ID. Uh, yeah, he makes funny jokes. He says uh, uh, he wants to go kill Ajax. He's like, let's go let's go kill Ajax again and see what he's up to. Uh, really funny jab, at, well not really a jab, but a joke when he says, I'm gonna call up Liefeld and have him draw me some new villains, villains or enemy or some shit, which is hilarious. Rob Liefeld is the creator of Deadpool. So he, who's gonna be at C2E2 this year. Woohoo! So, man, it's fun, funny, funny fucking video. Uh, okay. So Deadpool. Where are we at on Deadpool 2? Uh, a lot of drama with Deadpool 2. Uh, the first, first round of drama was they couldn't find a director. Tim Miller, the guy who directed the first Deadpool, 
movie backed out out of uh, creative differences with Ryan Reynolds. Wow, I, didn't I think know it had that. a lot to do with the casting of uh, Cable. So, so Tim Miller's out. David Leach is in, which is awesome because David Leach, the director of John, John Wick. John Wick. So if you're a fan of John Wick. <laughs> And all the blood and bullets yeah. that come with John Wick, that's that's going to be what Deadpool looks like, hopefully. That's so, cool. but bullets are going to be flying in Deadpool, too. Um, but speaking of cable, that's a drama. If you haven't been following the drama <laughs> that is. <laughs> Kaylee, are you want to sit Sorry. Here? Yeah, good idea. <laughs> uh, they've been trying forever to try to find somebody to play the actor of cable, or the role of cable. It started out with Stephen Lang, who you know from Avatar. And he was recently in the movie Don't Breathe. Oh, yeah. Old guy. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. my pick. He's perfect for Cable, man. He looks just like him. He might be a little old. Big um, dude, so, too. Yeah, yeah, he's huge. Uh, Ron Perlman, Hellboy, oh, was tossed awesome. around for, for oh, a while. He didn't make the cut. Dolph Lundgren was, was was in the in the lead to, to take the, the role. That didn't work out. Oh, Dolph Lundgren, heck? you know, Rocky IV. Get rid of his Dolph Lundgren. Uh, <laughs> Kyle Chandler from Friday Night Lights. Uh, which I thought was kind of a silly pick. I, I didn't don't see even him. Know who that is. <laughs> looks, Sorry, Kyle like, Chandler. I mean, he's a good actor, but maybe yeah. he looks kind of like a game show host. Didn't yeah. look like, didn't look like Cable. Interesting. Pierce Brosnan. What? Was they tossed around Pierce Brosnan? That makes uh, no sense. Ryan Reynolds put all these like <laughs> little, little funny little kind of pictures of him with Pierce Brosnan. They're like big announcement next week. Big announcement. So everybody was in an uproar. Is Pierce Brosnan going to be Cable? No, Pierce Brosnan is not going to be Cable. Um, the biggest one was uh, David Harbour. Mm -hmm. The the police officer from Stranger Things, you know from Stranger yeah. Things, he was, it was like a done deal. David Harbour was going to be I can see Cable. That. I can see it. He'd have He's to put on about young, 100 though, pounds. Too, isn't he? Kind of yeah. Well. But apparently David Harbour's out. Jeez. Brad Pitt. Brad fucking Pitt was offered the role and he turned it down. <sighs> Now people are saying he may circle back around and want to do it. So there's a potential for a Brad Pitt cable. Uh, but right now, the number one pick, the guy who's probably going to get it, is Michael Shannon. Who is amazing, but I just don't see him. You don't Unless see him? Unless he can bulk up. He's got to bulk up big time. You think? He's a tall guy, though. I so love that's Michael helpful. Shannon. I love him. Yeah, I love him. Who doesn't love Michael Shannon? He's awesome. But he's already done Chicago Zod. Native, and he has is he from Chicago? Zod. Yeah. Sweet. Chicago. He's part owner of the Steppenwolf Theater. With, get out uh, of town. Gary Sinise. Yeah. Gary Sinise. Um, sorry, no, Gary, Gary Sinise is not going to be Cable. No. We're talking about Michael Shannon still. So yeah, I think the fact that he already played Zod, that might be a little confusing for people, but I don't know. I like him. I still say fucking Stephen Lang would be a killer Cable. Yeah. So as of now, as of as of episode 10 of Chuck Loda Comics Pick of the Week, Michael Shannon is going to be Cable. cable. If Brad Pitt doesn't change his mind. That would be so horrible. So, anyway, Deadpool 2, still in pre-production. They haven't even started filming. They start filming this summer in Vancouver. So, lots of crazy shit going on with Deadpool 2. Uh, really quick, Dark Tower poster, your thoughts? Oh my gosh, it's so cool. I love it. I love the inverted, like, New York city. And then there's the, it, or maybe it's New York. I don't know. Oh, it's New York. You, it was yeah, New York. you can see oh, okay. uh, the Empire State Building. I think the uh, Chrysler think Building the, is on there. The the, just the shape of the buildings forming the Dark Tower in the center. And... Sean has read all the Dark Tower novels. I'm, I'm on the last one, so. It was a while ago, but I've been looking forward to this movie forever. Of course, it's not going to cover all, well, eight books now. The original was seven, and then Stephen King threw one in the mix mm -hmm. that comes in between. But it's so not it? going to follow, it's not going to tell you the story of all eight books. It's like... You know what it's going to be? Not really. It looks like, from the poster, <laughs> it looks like it could be, um, if, you, if you're familiar with the books, Wizard and Glass and Song of Susanna, or not Wizard and Glass, uh, Song of Susanna and uh, Wolves of the Cala, sort of the end of Wolves and all of Song of Susanna pretty much takes place in New York, so it's probably going to center around that time uh, period of books. We don't really know. Nobody, yeah. nobody knows, and you can't tell anything from this poster. Yeah, it's a cool poster. It's, it's very... Inception Doctor Strange looking poster. It looks like mm -hmm. it looks exactly like the, the Dark Knight movie poster from, from way back when. So it's a cool poster. Yeah. I like how it says, you know, there are other worlds than these. That's a big popular line from the book. Um, anyway, so the movie is, is God, directed by, what's this guy's name? Nicolaj Arcel? <laughs> he hasn't directed, but like, I think like five movies, all foreign films. He's a screenwriter for the girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh. 
the the the, for, the, the foreign version yeah, of Brooklyn Jenkins. So, I don't very know. Good. <laughs> well, he's just a screenwriter. He wasn't the director. Okay. I heard that was really good. I heard really? people say that was better than the one that came out in the U.S. Oh, okay. but I've never seen it. Um, interesting though, if you are fans of the Dark Tower, this movie is not gonna have Susanna or Eddie Dean yeah. in it. They're not on the IMDb page, so it's just gonna be <laughs> Roland, and... Little Jake, and they, uh, some vampires. I think are gonna be in it. Well, obviously. And Matt McConaughey is, right. is the man in black. Yeah. So I don't know. Look for it. It comes out, what, in July? July. So. July. More to come, so man. Ready. The poster doesn't do that much, but it is a neat looking poster. Yeah. And it's just good to see some 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 imagery from the potential movie coming up. Yeah. So, That's anyway. Not to change subjects, but speaking of cool posters, that Prometheus, or the, not Prometheus, Ooh, the Alien, Alien Covenant, Covenant poster. Covenant poster. It's pretty We're cool. We're going to put that up right here. <laughs> Just this had to poster. throw that in there, man. I'm glad you did, because this is like one of the greatest posters ever. <laughs> we'll put it up, you can look at it. If you look really closely, you see people, mm. face huggers. Uh, there's, it looks like a like a Greek statue. It looks like a relief cool. that you'd see in a museum in Europe or something somewhere. And it's uh, there's a light source at the top. Everybody's climbing to the light. The people are all dying in the bottom in the shadows and just there's aliens everywhere. That's the poster that you get put in a frame you stick on your wall. It's, it's a real <laughs> piece of art. So whoever made that poster, if there's an award for movie posters, kudos. I can give it to them because that, <laughs> that poster is something else. Nailed it! It's nothing to do with the Dark Tower or no, Deadpool 2. Just now, that'd be a hilarious Deadpool 2 poster if they <laughs> did a spoof poster of that for Deadpool 2. Think about it. If you're Deadpool you're 2, you're listening out there. That would be funny as shit. That's a good idea. <laughs> so yeah, so that's kind of our nerd news. Deadpool, Dark Tower. More to come. Getting on to our Picks of the week. Comic book picks of the week. Uh, we've been doing this show ten times. Ten times. So, what <laughs> better weeks, than a monumental Thor comic book review? This is that we're going to review. Usually we do. She does a book. I do a book. Today we're just going to do this one book. Yeah, they just wrapped up the Unworthy Thor. It's a book uh, by Jason Aaron. It's about man, the guy Thor, not the female Thor who's currently Thor. A little bit of backstory on Thor before we get into this. It's going to be a quick review, so don't don't freak out. Um, you don't know what's going on with Thor. This is it in a nutshell. Thor, who you see here. Thor, who everybody knows from the movies. Guy Thor. Guy Thor. <laughs> uh, back like a couple years ago in a book called Original Sin number 7, Thor was on the moon with Nick Fury. Hanging out, having bro time. And uh, <laughs> Nick Fury whispered something in his ear, and you don't know what it was, so as soon as he whispered something in his ear, Thor drops his hammer can't pick it up anymore. He is no longer worthy to carry Mjolnir, that's the name of the hammer, nerd alert. Um, so he's, he's no longer worthy Thor. Uh, later on, and when Jason Aaron started his run of Thor, uh, which the girl Jane Foster came and picked up the hammer off oh, Jason the Aaron moon. writes that oh, book yeah. too, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he's, he's a Good massive, job. awesome run of, of Thor nice. by Jason Aaron. So Jane Foster picks it up. Jane Foster, Foster is now Thor. Thor is a woman. Woman Thor. Woman Thor aside, Odin's son, who he now calls himself because he's no longer Thor, God of Thunder, uh, has, you know, he has no hammer. He's just walking around kicking ass, just doing stuff, not being Thor. Being all depressed. Yeah, and he loses his arm. <laughs> he gets in a fight with uh, uh, Malekith, who you know, who's the dark elf from Thor 2, the movie. He saw the Dark World, wasn't my favorite. Marvel movie. No. I fell asleep to it twice. So but you may not remember. Malekith, <laughs> the dark elf, cut off his arm. So now he's got this prosthetic arm, which is made out of Uru, the, the dark metal. The same metal that Thor's hammer is made out of, his arm is now made out of. So that's kind of neat. Pretty it's cool. a bitchin' prosthetic metal. super arm. So if you're wondering in these, like, why he's got a big fucking black arm, it's because it's... It's not he, a real arm. His arm got chopped <laughs> So, anyway. So that's what's going on with Thor. Thor is no longer Thor anymore. So this is the story of what the hell he's been doing while he's not being Thor. So, in a nutshell, how do we start this? It's, it's five books. It's, it's, yeah, five, five books. books. We're just gonna run through all of them real quick. It's called Unworthy Thor, just so you know. Mm -hmm. You can still pick up all these issues. Um, so what's it about? Help me out here. It's, well, again, like Chuck said, so Thor is no longer Thor, he's Odinson. He's out doing crazy battles just because he's drinking Mead all the time. He's meeting, he's got, it up. He's meeting it up. Him and his uh, goat, Toothnasher. He rides a goat. 
goat. And it's a big goat. It's not, obviously, it's got to be a big goat to carry Thor. He, so, read, he rides a massive so, goat sorry. through the universe. Yep, yep. Awesome. Magical, massive, huge goat. Big goat. <laughs> so he finally comes across uh, the this being called the Unseen. Yes. Who actually tells him that there is another hammer. So not his original hammer, which is called... Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Write that down. <laughs> There's another hammer, and that he's told that it's actually on old Asgard. So, you know, our boy Odinson gets all curious and is like, another well, hammer. shoot, another I got, hammer. I, Maybe I can I, go try and pick that one up. I need a hammer. <laughs> so he goes to old Asgard, but what he finds is nothing. Asgard's gone. Asgard's gone. It's just the whole, the whole realm, realm is empty. Is just it's gone. just this empty, massive space. But he does run into an old friend, um, Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill, horse face looking Thor guy. Cool guy. You know, he's awesome. He's awesome. All the Thors are great. Mm. Thor books, by the way, are great. You never mm. read a Thor book? They're hilarious. They talk. He talks just like he does in the movie. Yep. Old Everything English is these bubbles. and nows and shit. He's always drinking. Yep. Getting drunk, having fun, <laughs> floating around the world. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I interrupted. Gibson, but <laughs> I interrupted. No, that was. Floating around the world. That was uh, what's his face. Uh, anyway, we're we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> okay, so. Runs into Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill tells him, hey, I know where Asgard is and why it's gone. It's the Collector. The Collector stole the entire yeah. realm of Asgard because the hammer was on it. Yeah, hold on real quick. The Collector, if you're not familiar with him in the comics, you'd know the Collector from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, played by a Benicio, Benicio Del, Del Toro. Toro. <laughs> He's the guy. He's the guy who was... <laughs> he did, he was awesome scene in Guardians of the Galaxy where he gets the he talks all about the infinity stones and stuff. So anyway, that's the collector. Same collector. Moving on. Same guy. Yep. So they find out in this quick reunion that or well Thor finds out in this quick reunion that the collector has Asgard. But as they're rekindling this friendship they have, they get interrupted by some unknown Henchmen? Henchmen? Like the collectors, That's a good word. <laughs> collector's thugs show up yeah. and basically kidnap Thor because while the collector has the hammer, he basically has Asgard. The only reason he took Asgard is because the hammer's the on it and there. he can't lift it. Right. So he's got the whole thing sitting in his collection. The entire of Asgard is sitting in the collector's collection. <laughs> so he needs Thor, or who he thinks is Thor. He doesn't even realize that he's unworthy anymore. So the collector sends his henchmen out to kidnap Thor, and he does. He kidnaps Thor, he kidnaps the Tooth Nasher, the Flying Goat, and Beta, Ray, Beta Bill. Ray Bill gets them all. So Thor will come back, lift the hammer, give it to the collector. It's basically his plan. It's the idea. But that, you know. Doesn't really work out. <laughs> so he does, he imprisons Thor and his gang. Uh, just as, as Thor is sitting in the prison, they cut to Thanos. Thanos is in this book. Uh, Thanos also wants this hammer, this rumored mm -hmm. second hammer, super magical hammer. So Thanos sends out his everyone's favorite hench women, Proxica, Pro, Proxima Midnight, and Black Swan, and a third person. A third person, but this third person is who? It, it's a person that we don't know. Don't know. It's hooded, cloaked, it's, mystery it's a being. being. But this is the being that told Thanos that the hammer, the collector, had the hammer. Right. So, so that's just, what we know. So just as Thor is sitting people. there imprisoned, there's a big prison break scene where <laughs> Thor and Tooth Natcher and Beta Ray Bill are all breaking out of the Collector's prison, just as Proxima Midnight and Black Swan and Thanos' hench women show up, mm -hmm. and so they join in the fight, and everybody's fighting, and it's a big, right. massive battle, and it's great. The mead is being not drank yet, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hilarious. I mean, it's hilarious, it's action-packed, the art's incredible. It's great. Um, so that pretty much gets us through the first few issues. Mm -hmm. That kind of leads us to the final issue. Um, Issue number five just came out. It's the latest issue. It came out last week. And what happens in issue number five? This is a pivotal, pivotal book. For the Marvel universe. For the whole, for the, for the, yeah, for the yeah. Thor mythology, this whole run, it's not just a joke run. This is an important run because this is the run where you finally find out, specifically in this issue, what it was that Nick Fury said to Thor <laughs> to make him no longer worthy. He whispers something and for years, no one knows what Nick Fury said. It's been a mystery. We well, find out in Unworthy Thor number five. And so basically what happens is Thor, after the big prison break thing and all that stuff, Thor finally walks up to the hammer that's sitting on Asgard. 
And he goes, he puts his hand on it, and he's ready to pick it up, and then he changes his mind. He says, you know what? This is not my hammer. My hammer is my hammer. Right. You know, Mjolnir is my hammer. And this one is not calling to him. Yeah, so this he isn't doesn't calling to me. The... This belongs to somebody else. Yep. So I'm not going to pick it up. Good for you, Thor. But even though he doesn't pick it up, you can see this connection of energy and power between him and the hammer yeah, coming through. Yeah, he probably could have picked it up. So he probably could have picked it up, but he chose not to. Yep. <laughs> and he gains all this, some lightning god of thunder power, and yeah. who knows what because He it basically is. takes the energy from the hammer, uses that energy to completely fuck up Proxima Midnight and Black Swan, Thanos' hench people, sends them off into the nether sphere, blows them all away. Yep. Steals back Asgard. Steals back out, yeah, he uses, place. Right, he uses the hammer power yeah. to steal Asgard away from, basically teleports Asgard out of the collector's <laughs> collection and sends it back to its rightful spot where it's supposed to be in Asgard. And also, he releases all of the collector's collections, yeah, basically, which is interesting. The collector, everything the collector has collected is mostly like living beings, ironically, but... Releases them all. He releases the them all. The entire collector's collection <laughs> is now empty. Yep. What a dick move. You know, he spent <laughs> centuries, thousands, eons, collecting all this cool shit from all over the universe, and Thor just lets it all out. And now the collector doesn't have squat. He's got to start all over. What yep. a bummer. What, what a bummer. bummer. So anyway, so he te teleports Asgard back. <laughs> Everything's good. So instead of picking up the hammer, he says, you know what, we're just going to sit here. It's him, Beta Ray Bill, everybody there sitting on Asgard. He's like, I'm just going to sit here and protect this hammer. That's going to be what, I'm, what I do. You sit here until the person, the rightful owner of this hammer, comes to get it. And until then, I'm just going to protect it from people like Thanos and everybody else. Good for you, Thor. Mead so, drinking time. Mead time. Everybody starts <laughs> drinking, getting drunk. Party's over. Or party starts. Party starts. The book's basically over. And yeah. Oh. But then they show that, yeah. Well, before that, you never... He eventually, while they're drinking mead and stuff, that's when you cut to... He's sitting down with Beta Ray Bill, and he tells... Beta Ray Bill, what Nick Fury said that made him unworthy. And it was a pretty freaking awesome secret, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, because you got to pick up Unworthy Thor number five if you want to know what it is. But you should, because this is like 20 years from now, and everybody's talking about Thor. You're going to want to know what the hell they're talking about. So pick up Unworthy Thor number five. So there is a, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, epilogue an epilogue kind of at the end of the book, where you show a, oh, shit, before the epilogue. <laughs> <laughs> you cut back to Thanos. Uh, Thanos' hench people oh. come back, and they are they come back to Thanos empty-handed, which is a really cool scene. Oh, yeah. Um, so they come back, and Thanos is like, you know, screw you, you guys are worthless. So he, he's going to banish him, and then the hooded figure, who you don't know who it is, she takes her hood off, and it's Hela, who is the, the goddess of the damned. Hela, remember that name, because Hela's going to be a major player in the new movie Thor Ragnarok. Thor, uh, what's that, Thor 3? Yep. So anyway... And Hela, basically, this is kind of a side story. Hela says to Thanos, you know, look, you don't want to kill me. You want to keep me on the team because I can give you what you've always wanted. And what does Thanos want? He wants death. death. So <laughs> that's going to be its own book, I hope. Hela helping Thanos. And not death, death as in, like, dying. The physical death. Death is a woman. He lady mistress death. Mistress death. <laughs> it's the love of his life. physical embodiment of <laughs> death. If you didn't know that, I just wanted to clarify that for you. Hot babe. That Thanos loves. So, <sighs> anyways, yeah. now the epilogue. <laughs> Very last last page of the book, you see a shouted a shadowed figure come out, talking to the hammer. I guess Thor's off drunk because he's totally doing a <laughs> shitty job of protecting, protecting this hammer. This, hammer. this kid just walks on up, and he says, "You know, hey, hammer's been calling to me." This mystery figure walks up, lifts the hammer. New Thor, and then that's when they tease, coming soon, the saga of the all new Ultimate Thor. War Thor is what they call it. War Thor. So. He's going out there and starting some wars. Yeah, so look for a new book coming out. It's gonna, I think it's going to be called The Ultimate Thor, and it's going to feature War Thor. Where the hell War Thor is? You don't even know who he is. Nope. So, anyway, there's our review. Number 10. Review number Yay! 10. The Unworthy awesome Thor. Book. Pick it up at a Thor store near Thor you. Thor store near you. And if, you know, it, I'm sure the trade's going to come out real soon here since it just wrapped up so yeah. if you don't want to pick up all the individual books I'm sure they'll sell them in the 
Nice yep. little compact version. So that was a much longer review than I thought it was yeah, gonna be. Yeah, well. <laughs> oh well, I just stuck around, man. It's five Tenth bucks, episode, damn it. technically we would've done two reviews, so you combine the two, it's one yep. review. So normally this is the part of the show where we would do mailbag, but nobody sent us any mail. Yeah. If you wanna send us mail, send it to right here. Send it to uh, chuckloadofcomics at gmail. That's right. We'll read your viewer mail, we'll read your comments, your questions, we'll answer your questions. Just send us a message, I guarantee you we'll read it on the air. Yep. But since we have no mailbag, we're gonna do and we're gonna revive an old segment <laughs> called Trailers of the Week. Trailers of the Week. Here it is, Trailers of the Week. I love this graphic. <laughs> it's a trailer, get it? It's a trailer park. <laughs> so, there's really only one trailer worthy of showing this week, and I think you know which one it is. Dun, 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 dun. Of course, we're talking about the Justice League. They've been teasing this trailer for a week with little tiny trailers. Uh, on TV commercials, uh, trailers for trailers, teasers for trailers, all over YouTube, and it finally dropped on Saturday, and it was awesome. It was I love it. It was great. Now, normally we would just sit here and tell you about the trailer <laughs> and describe it to you and show silly pictures. But today, Since we're gonna is, show it to you. This is our 10th <laughs> episode, we're gonna show you the trailer. So, go make some popcorn, pause the video, go make popcorn, we'll be here when you get back. We'll wait, go, yeah. Yep. All right, you back? Popcorn made? All right, here we go. The trailer. First trailer for the Justice League. Justice League! Justice Hell League! Was that yeah. that cool or what? What it's is there so... to say? I did. But damn, that was good. And as you actually mentioned, you might... I'm stealing it from you, but... I never knew I'd be excited about Aquaman. <laughs> You'd have told me two years ago that I was more excited about seeing Aquaman in a movie than I am about Superman, Batman, <laughs> Wonder Woman, The Flash. I can't wait to see Jason Momoa as That's, Aquaman. He is gonna, he's going to steal the show. So he's going to be the Groot of the Justice League. <laughs> and so Justice League is coming out before Aquaman, which... Yeah, Aquaman is doesn't come out. Yeah. To like year after next. So they're I think. really investing a lot in these. In yeah, these so it looks great. Already, so. Ben Affleck looks hilarious in this trailer. He looks not only does he look badass, but he looks he's funny. Mm -hmm. Makes a really funny joke about uh, Flash asks and what's, what's your superpower? Super he said, "I'm rich," which is <laughs> so funny. Yep. You get to see J.K. Simmons as uh, Commissioner oh, Gordon. Yeah. You see him at the end. You get to see uh, Dark Side's uh, little henchmen motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. So much in this, and it's a fast-paced, action-packed yep. trailer. Is the movie going to be any good? Who knows? But damn, the trailer was good. Trailer was good. Trailer for Suicide Squad was good, but look what happened there. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> so, but anyway, so far so good. Nothing about this makes me think it's going to suck. Yeah. So. And like you said also, I uh, kind of just don't even want to see another trailer. I kind of just want to... That was enough. That Man, was they funny. showed enough. When does this come out? Uh, November. Oh, November. Oh, it's so far away. You got a ways to Wonder go. Wonder Woman is June, though. Uh, Wonder Woman is June. June. I think it's June. Maybe May. No, it is June. It's June. Yeah, June. I have it on my phone, but my phone's filming the show right now, so I can't look it up. <laughs> so yeah, Justice League, check it out. And thanks for watching, people. Woohoo! Thanks for joining us for our 10th episode. Thanks for letting us do 10 episodes. 10 whole episodes. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do another even bigger show when we hit 20. Oh yeah, next, next week's episode. C2E2. Okay, we're taking a break from our normal pick of the week. Yep. Next week, we are doing a massive, monumentally huge C2E2 show. Pre C2E2 show. I'm going to tell you all about some insider tips and who's coming to the panels, what artists are coming, what. We're going to do everything. We're going to cover everything uh, from the freaking yeah. guests to where the bathrooms are. Yep. So <laughs> it's all going to be in that show. So tune in next week for the C2E2 Info Spectacular. That's right. So until then, I'm Chuck Lindsay. Shauna Lindsay. Oh, I said that so stupidly. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Chuck Loda Comics. We will see you here next week. Bye. Bye-bye.